Never mind. Yeah, he just seen the hole. There he is. Oh, dude. He just seen the hole. He is so pissed off. It's not even funny. He's dragging my ass around this lake. Oh, man. Dude. <laughs> Did you see those bubbles? Yeah. Oh, man. He just let out a big gas. Of what the fuck? Oh, now he's pissed. Dude. I thought that troll was pissed before. Oh my god. Hey, welcome to another episode of Living High Wild and Free. Uh, in today's episode, we're doing something kind of special. Uh, this isn't footage that's been shot recently. Uh, it was actually shot back in uh, March of 2015. And the reason why I'm doing this is because of uh, how epic the, the trip was. Um, but I wasn't uh, even thinking about having a YouTube channel, so it's just kind of like... A video for friends uh, to kind of mark this unbelievable uh, story and I wanted to do kind of an intro to tell a little bit about what was going on uh, and uh, to lead up to this amazing uh, lake trout that was caught in northern Minnesota so to give a little bit of a background uh, the, the the lake where we fished is within the Boundary Waters Canoe Area in northern Minnesota, which is a wilderness area that was set aside by the federal government. A little bit over a million acres. Uh, and within the boundaries of this area, uh, there's limited access with uh, motorized uh, equipment. So like a boat, uh, for most of the, the area, like a, a motor boat wouldn't be able to access uh, these lakes and also in the winter no snowmobiles anywhere in the boundary waters um, so people usually uh, travel by canoe in the summer uh, some hike um, but in the winter uh, a lot of skiers hikers uh, and then also dog sleds so before moving to uh, Saskatchewan I, I grew up and lived in in Minnesota and I lived in a little town called Ely and in that town uh, you know, I had an opportunity to do a lot of exploration of the Boundary Waters, and it was one of the most amazing times. Like, it, it's one of, kind of the time that I really uh, started to devote my, like, a, a lot of my life to uh, the wilderness. Like, it, it really opened up my eyes. How important it was to go to these areas where, uh, you know, there was no motorized access like it, it felt like a, a freedom and kind of where this whole uh, life philosophy started for me of, of living high wild and free just to kind of give a general plan uh, we were planning on hiking to a lake uh, that was roughly 17 miles it it could vary it could be 16 it could be 18 it's hard to say exactly how far we hiked because we weren't tracking it but it was about a 17 mile hike to the lake uh, and we were planning on doing it in one go. So that's what we did. We, we left uh, at 10 o'clock on Thursday night and we arrived at the lake uh, Friday, the, so the following day at two o'clock in the afternoon. So we had hiked for about 16 hours. Uh, hiking conditions were good until we got to the last five miles uh, where we were able to just hike on uh, dog sledding tracks so the, the snow was very well packed down it was easy walking uh, the last five miles were not packed down really at all uh, and there was about three feet of snow at the time and there was pockets of slush everywhere so it was brutal uh, it was a brutal hike um, you know temperatures uh, were around negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit um, and of course with wind chill and everything, it was, uh, it was really brutal, but we were determined to get out to this lake because we had suspected, we didn't really know, but we suspected that there was going to be a, a big lake trout in this lake. Um, we're planning on staying for eight days, uh, camping on this lake and, and basically fishing every single day. Um, and during our time, the, the temperatures went from really cold, so it went from negative 20 and it kind of went up to, uh, I think about 40 degrees. 
Um, and so the snow really started to melt. Uh, made for really great fishing. Like it was very pleasant to uh, to fish all day. Uh, temp like you know, by the end of winter, when you start hitting 40 degrees, it literally feels like you're in you know Miami or something like. <laughs> Forty degrees feels so warm after you've you know gone months of you know negative twenty or whatever. So uh, yeah, it made for very pleasant fishing, but the fishing wasn't good. Like we were catching all kinds of fish, but they were literally like two pound lake trout uh, and just constantly catching little fish. Um, we were moving all over the lake, trying all different things, and by the fourth, fifth day. Uh, I had basically given up that, you know, like we were tried everything. We were trying different structures, different lures, different techniques, uh, and it was still producing, you know, two pound lake trout. The, the biggest we caught was a five pound lake trout by that time. And it just, you know, it was fun. The numbers were fun, but the, the, the size of the fish was disappointing, you know, that we hiked all this way out there. Uh, you know, it was, so brutally difficult uh, to hike and drag a sled uh, that far out there that we really wanted a big payoff. Um, and so I was in about 70 feet of water off of a point on the lake, like a submerged point off the lake. And I literally just kind of gave up for the day. It was the end of the day, it was like three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, you know, sunset around six o'clock. So it was only about three hours of sunlight left. And I was just basically, I had my Vexlar off, I had a, a jumbo spoon on, and I was just sitting there just doing these huge jigs. All of a sudden I, you know, get a bite and I, I hook into it and I can tell right away it's got a lot of weight. And I literally fight the fish for 10 seconds, it gets off. I'm just devastated. Like, honestly, I'm so bummed out that, you know, I hooked into something that felt like a really good fish and here, it, you know, just gets off. So I'm doing basically the same thing. I mean, every once in a while, uh, you know, a trout will rebite even though you hooked it, uh, especially big fish. For some reason, uh, big lake trout will rebite even if they get hooked. I think it has something to do with that they're 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 eating bigger prey, so they're kind of used to that prey fighting back a little bit. So like a, a prick from a hook, uh, maybe isn't such a big deal to a big lake trout compared to a little lake trout. So I'm back down, I'm fishing, uh, and I hook into it again, and this time I really set the the hook. I make sure that you know it's in there, it's good, and it just starts ripping drag. Like, uh, you know, a big lake trout is, is kind of uh, signified by its ability to just take drag very slowly, like, right? Like, it's not these like fast bursts of energy. It's just kind of like the slow drag as the fish is pulling away. And that's exactly what was happening. Um, this was the first trout that I ever caught of that size. Buddy that actually filmed this was about 200 yards away, fishing in a different spot. And I knew that I needed his help. Uh, so I called him over and by the time we started filming, it had already been about five minutes of the fish fighting. Three to five minutes already. And I have barely gained any line on it. It's that big hoss we've been waiting for. Oh god. I've Oh my god. Well how deep were you? Uh about seventy feet. I was about ten feet off the bottom. I didn't even have my Vexlar on or nothing. And I was just sitting here doing some power jigs. And this is actually the sloth, a fish that felt similar to this just earlier. And no, 
now this is the second fish here. And I can barely gain any line on this. I do not have the right fucking setup here to be dealing with these big fish. This is unbelievable. We've been fishing for how long have we been out here for now? Four days? Yeah. And the biggest fish we've caught is a five pounder out of uh, probably a hundred trout. And it's just been horrible. We've been getting cranky at each other. I wanted to dunk Bobby's head in the hole a couple of times. Oh, I've wanted to smack Bob so hard already. <laughs> and if, Especially with the word frisky. Let's just, oh, let's just throw that word down the hole yeah. right now. You just ruined that word for me. <laughs> I love frisky trout, <laughs> but Bob has ruined that word for me. And I mean, we're having a conversation here while trying to catch this unbelievably massive trout. I, I don't want to say it's massive right now because the way that how angry these fish are in this lake, it could honestly be a pounder right now. It's at least got some shoulders. It's all the counts. Kind of I mean, it's making my wrist sore. <laughs> I can't even. Oh, dude, the one I got last year, my wrist and forearm are cramping up by the end. It's, it's probably something similar. I don't want to say it's a 20 pounder, because I've never honestly felt a 20 pounder. But I, I, I might have gained 20 feet on this fish. Do you, do you have a leader of any sort? I think it's like 12 pound mono. Look at that rod bend. It's unbelievable. I mean, if I tried horsing this thing, I, there is no horsing it. <laughs> There's nothing. There's that nothing fish I is controlling do. you. Yeah. I'm just kind of playing along trying to tucker this thing out. And we haven't even, it hasn't even seen the hole yet. Well, they see the fucking hole. He's going to get so pissed off. This fish probably doesn't even feel the hook in its mouth yet. Every time I try getting a little line on him, he goes, nah, -uh, no way. So Tyler, what was going through your mind before you hooked into this fish? <laughs> Dude, I was thinking, how horrible, because we hiked so long, I mean, we took a day of just pure hiking to get out here, and this fish is coming up. Never mind, yeah, he just seen the hole. There he is. Oh, dude. He just seen the hole. He is so pissed off. It's not even funny. He's dragging my ass around this lake. Oh, man, dude. That's a big fish. Dude, you see those bubbles? Yeah. Oh, man. He just let out a big gasp of what the fuck. Oh, now he's pissed. Dude. I thought that trout was pissed before. Oh my god. <coughs> this thing is just. Just. Oh my god. I've been recording for about five minutes now. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Look like you're a little jittery there. I can't. My wrist <laughs> is. I mean. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh, I can't even feel my fingertips right now. I don't know if it's adrenaline or... <clears throat> oh, no. That's uh, the pure wrath of the Laker gods right there. Oh, God, this is a Laker god right here. Oh. Dude, it's... So man. Can you see it? Yeah. You set down that phone. Dude, this is huge. No way. Fucking it? huge, you man. It? <laughs> oh man, dude, that just that was, is it gonna be able to fit up that hole? It's gonna be close. Dude, get those fucking choppers off dude, right now. Dude, well if I have to grab it in the tooth. Oh yeah. I'm gonna
I will sacrifice. Bigger than the fish that you caught last year? It's huge. It's fucking huge. Oh my god. <clears throat> that thing has to come up and fall. I gotta see this fish. I did not get to see it. I didn't see mine in the water last year. I didn't see it until we got it up. It's hard to say, but that. And there's so much ice, too. There's, I mean, there's like three feet of ice. That I can't even. It, it seemed, you got, you're in control of what, what the fish is doing. Just get his head in the hole and then it's in the hole. There you go, he's loose. He's so tired now. He's so tired. Compared to when this all started, oh, yeah. he is so he's still tired. Just controlling your life, though. I'm so tired. I mean, yeah. this, I've never been tired. Catching a fish. Ever. This right here is what makes it work, man. Oh my god. <coughs> no fucking way. I can't put. Oh no. Let's do that. Can you see okay. him? Dude, it's a fucking thing. <laughs> his tail is here. You're like his back is here. And his head is down there. Eat it. Holy sh! Thought your line snapped. Oh my god, dude, it's <laughs> huge. I can't see it. I can't, I can't see it. Oh my god, is that big, dude? Oh no! Oh my god! Oh my god! That thing is a hoss, dude. That thing's. Siphon makes these <laughs> other trout look. Oh my god! I can't. Here, you gotta, you gotta box the light as best as you can, so I can see. Here we go. Oh my. god. Oh, dude, this is this is 20. this is a twenty pounder, dude. I've never <coughs> seen a fucking trout this big. I've never I've never I mean a wall mount, <laughs> everything. The only time I've ever seen a trout this big is on videos of Canada. Dude, it's huge. Oh my god, dude, it's head. Oh, dude, Bobby's running over Bob, here. Bob, get the f over here! I got a 25 pounder, dude! It's fing huge! Alright, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Ready? Oh my god, dude. Yeah. Dude, you're gonna have to reach down there and grab him. Hold on, hold on. His dude, head is as big as this hole, dude. His head's as big as the hole! I'm gonna try. Dude, this is a 25, 30 pound trout. I'm not even Dude, exaggerating. Huge. Just come here. Come here and look at this <coughs> thing's head. Can you see it? Dude, somebody's gonna have to reach down there and grab that. It's literally not moving anywhere. Can you get that thing? Bob, oh, here. Let me take. Here, here. Here, hold on. No, hold on, you guys. Hold on. Dude, I can grab him. Get him. Don't bump my hook, please. Where's your line? Right there. I was gonna get my arm wet. I didn't. Got him? I don't lose him. Got him? He's not fitting. Dude, it's not fitting, dude. dude, then get out of the hole. Just get out of the hole. I'll let him swim. You Keep guys got it. Yeah, I got it. Hole. I got it. it. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm positive, dude. So positive. This is a fing record. I'm not even. Did you see the size of that fing trout, dude?
Okay, Troy. Fuck my hand. I had to get it. My fucking thumb in it, dude. Holy <laughs> shit! Oh my god, dude! Oh my god, dude! Get on the oh, get on the light! Holy! F oh my god! Whale! There's your fucking thirty pounder, dude. Oh my god. So something I want to be very forthcoming with is that uh, I did not handle this fish very well. Um, a, I was not expecting to catch the size of fish that I did. And B, uh, the way that I handled this fish was inappropriate. Uh, mainly because I was using way too light of line. I was using 12 pound fluorocarbon and uh, fishing with a medium 38 inch rod uh this this setup would be good for you know 10 pound trout all day great setup for 10 pound trout uh to catch an almost 30 pound lake trout on this setup uh basically by the time the fish got to the the top of the hole uh the likelihood of its survival is incredibly diminished uh, because of exhaustion uh and then also uh it was out of the water uh, for a decent amount of time, we were trying to rush to get it back into the water. So we took very quick measurements, took a picture, got it back into the water. I think that was even too long. And also, when I held the fish, I put my fingers inside of its gill plate, which potentially could get, uh, damage the gills and, de and also, again, decrease the likelihood of survival after release. So that's, those three things make me think that, that this fish actually, uh, you know, had an extremely low likelihood of surviving. Uh, I, you know, have evolved as a, as a fisherman, you know, that I've, uh, been, I've become more and more conscientious about how I handle fish, about uh, mortality rates, even with catch and release. It was definitely one of the, the best trips I've ever been on. It was the most challenging, uh, physically challenging. Uh, because of the hike, I actually uh, still have an injury in my knee from hiking out. Uh, when uh, on the hike out uh, from the warm temperatures, uh, the the snow started to melt and created these huge pockets of slush on these lakes that we were hiking uh, hiking on. And uh, from just lifting up my feet. To get out of the water as I was walking on top of snow so there's water on top of ice and on top of the water is snow so uh, just to hike through that uh, actually uh, uh, damaged one of the tendons in my knee such a challenge uh, and such a huge re reward so thanks for watching I really appreciate all the support that I've been getting if you have enjoyed this video then please subscribe uh, so you can stay connected um, as my channel grows, there's going to be more and more fishing content, uh, more winter camping content, backcountry camping, uh, food recipes, hunting, uh, all kinds of great things. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, keep living high, wild, and free.